Hey guys, nothing particularly special today, just some good old debunking. For a long time, scientists have debated when, how and where the first life supposedly evolved. There are various hypotheses, like maybe RNA came first. Perhaps life evolved around hydrothermal vents. Maybe life arrived on an asteroid. Yes, the thing is, it's very difficult to pinpoint exactly how life came about on Earth. We know some of the processes that went through, but it's hard to portray an exact picture down to the minute detail. That being said, you'd be surprised we know a lot more than you think. But there are still a few different hypotheses that is fun to explore. In fact, my favorite idea is that life came from elsewhere, transported to Earth by some sort of meteorite or something. Certain organisms would not have a problem residing in the center of rocks. Of course, this wouldn't answer where the first life actually came from, but it's still a likely scenario. But yeah, let's get into that later. There's lots of video to watch. But none are satisfying enough due to significant problems with each one. <laughs> really? What kind of problems are there? I'd love to hear you share some. Or is this some vague claim you're making that you won't go into detail? Hmm, typical. Oh, fun fact. If you go into the Wikipedia article about abiogenesis, on the top you will see, for non-scientific views on the origin of life, see creation myth. Ah, I love Wikipedia. And now an old idea has been revived and refined. Maybe there was a chemical big bang and life arose spontaneously in a river with all the major components in place all at once. As this article from New Scientist states, it has long been thought that the ingredients for life came together slowly bit by bit. Now there is evidence it all happened at once in a chemical big bang. That would actually be very interesting. The components of life are supposed to have come about gradually, with the first step being something of a pseudo-life. That would actually be the most probable since it conforms to what we know about organic chemistry. But if real scientific research shows that life could have come about all at once, I'm all down to consider it. Give me the paper and I'll give it a read. See how my reaction to this is different than those of creationists? Scientists would consider this idea while creationists would reject or accept this idea immediately depending on if it conforms to their creationist myth. Why is it that you can't start with the evidence and draw a conclusion from that rather than start with a conclusion and work backwards on the evidence. The article explains that life requires at the bare minimum three core systems, an outer membrane, the ability to metabolize, and the ability to reproduce using genes. What? Um, well, I don't actually agree with that. The outer membrane is true, it's a fancier way of saying container, but I guess it checks out. Metabolism is also true. In order for something to be alive, it has to use and consume energy. That's why I don't consider viruses as being alive. But the last one, reproduction, is not something I really consider to be essential, but more so a secondary aspect of life. The one I'm sure everyone can agree on to be one of the core traits of life is genetic information. That is, DNA, RNA, or proteins, something that makes up the core of the organism. One of the traits that this genetic medium must have is the ability to reproduce, yes, but the reproduction itself I'd say isn't part of the main results. Does that make sense? Well, whatever, let's just read the article itself. When Earth formed 4.5 billion years ago, it was a sterile ball of rock, slammed by meteorites and carpeted with erupting volcanoes. Within a billion years, it had become inhabited by microorganisms. Today, life covers every centimeter of the planet, from the highest mountains to the deepest seas. Yet every other planet in the solar system seems lifeless. What happened on our young planet? How did its barren rocks, sands, and chemicals give rise to life? Many ideas have been proposed to explain how life began. Most are based on the assumption that cells are too complex to have formed all at once, so life must have started with just one component and survived and somehow created the others around it. When put into practice in the lab, however, these ideas don't produce anything particularly lifelike. It is, some researchers starting to realize, like trying to build a car by making a chassis and hoping wheels and engines will spontaneously appear. The alternative, that life emerged fully formed, seemed even more unlikely. Yet perhaps astoundingly, two lines of evidence are converging to suggest that this is exactly what happened. It turns out that all the key molecules of life can form from the same simple carbon-based chemistry. What's more, they easily combine to make startlingly lifelike protocells. As well as explaining how life began, this everything first idea of life's origins also has implications for where it got started, and the most likely locations for extraterrestrial life too. A very interesting read. I mean, sure, it's not a primary article which already gives me red flags, but it's a fun read. Let's read the rest of it. Oh, I, uh, you know, I just uh, remembered I had to go take my hamster for a walk. Chemical evolutionists have a problem when it comes to trying to explain the origin of life. You need all three of these systems at the same time for life to even be imaginable. Really? Do you though? I honestly don't think so. If you have a piece of DNA, what's to say that's not living? I mean, our definition of living or not living is already pretty vague to begin with. Even the three things we determine that all life must have, does life really need to have all of that? Especially when we talk about the first life, it would definitely be a lot simpler. If you have a virus or a viroid, they're missing a few things required for us to officially classify it as living, but they can still be quite functional on their own. Of course, we wouldn't have 
have anything today to reflect on exactly what the first life was because they would be outcompeted, so it's difficult to grasp exactly how that would work. What we do know is that it took a long period of time to develop, which is why I'm skeptical of the claim that the components of life all came about together at once. So, scientists have argued over which came first, but now some say all three came at the same time. <laughs> now that's a pretty fortunate set of circumstances. In other words, it used to be that life evolved so slowly you couldn't see it happening, and now it happened so fast we missed it. My guess is that you're going to use this as ammo to spread your creationist propaganda, but <laughs> what do I know? Oh look, if these components came about all at once, then God must have created it. Yeah, well you still have to explain it coming about 4.5 billion years ago and that these are incredibly simple creatures that still went through evolution to produce all the living organisms today, including human beings. I've said this many times and I'll say it again. It doesn't matter what created the first life on Earth. Evolution is still true regardless. They are essentially independent of each other. So regardless of what you say there, you still have a huge mountain to climb. Geneticist Dr. Georgia Purdom says of this study, The scientists correctly define what you need for life, something to contain it, a membrane, ability to make and utilize energy, a metabolism, and the ability to reproduce. They've given up on bacteria being the first living organisms because they know how complex even those simplest organisms are. Since none of their other ideas about which came first have panned out, they've decided that all three requirements for life must have evolved at once from a Goldilocks chemistry. Man, if you quote Georgia Purdom, I automatically discredit what you're saying, because she is wrong on so much in biology. It's funny because what usually happens is that she shows that she at least somewhat understands genetics, but when she presents it, she twists it in a dishonest way, and it's pretty clear she's doing that. Anyway, regarding this quote itself, I don't think there's literally any modern scientists who believe that bacteria was the first organism on Earth. They say it's some sort of prokaryote, but only that is just to paint a picture to those who don't understand organic chemistry. It would be much simpler than the prokaryotes we're used to. I don't know if Georgia is just just disconnected with the scientific community or if she's purposely lying. So just the right molecules interacting under just the right conditions in just the right place led to a living organism. Just like Goldilocks is a fairy tale, so is their idea for the origin of life. Yep, discrediting it without even showing us what the claim is. Wonderful. I mean, I would love to read the article myself, but <laughs> I had to walk my hamster. Life only comes from life, and life only comes from the creator, God. Hmm, I could have sworn you were going to use this for your creationist propaganda, but I guess I was wrong. So, the strongest support for the origin of life story is this, that the alternatives don't work. Maybe that's because life didn't arise by natural processes. Really, their story is nothing more than a just-so story, because they have to somehow explain the origin of life without God. What? You haven't disproved anything. All you said was, haha, look at this new hypothesis, and didn't say anything to debunk it. Nor did you even mention the details of the claim. Nothing was disproven here. And even if all the, quote, alternative hypotheses has been disproven somehow, that still wouldn't prove the idea of intelligent design. You still need evidence for that claim, which so far you have none. They'd rather put their faith in the unbelievable that something as complex as life could just pop into existence than put their faith in the one who made them. And not just anyone, but the only one true God, the creator God of the Bible. Oh yeah? And why is your God the one who created life? Why isn't it Zeus, or Set, or Allah? I mean, don't get me wrong, none of these have any evidence to them, so that makes them just as credible as the God of the Bible. Life shows the fingerprints of the designer. Just consider one of the three categories for life, the ability to reproduce using genes. This requires an information system to code the instructions needed to assemble life. And information systems don't just pop into existence. Information only comes from other information, and ultimately a mind. In this case, the mind of the creator. Yeah, 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 you don't know what you're talking about. The sequences of genetic information does not have to come from other information. They hardly even mean anything on their own and only has value when there is an appropriate interpreter, which means they just started off as some random molecules. Nothing special, at least not special enough to warrant saying they must come from other information. That's just something creationists made up. Anyway, that's going to be the end of the video today. Once again, thank you to Fireshard, Liam, Alan Morton, and JN for your generous support over at Patreon. See you next week.